Hey, hey guys, welcome back. Man, it's uh seemed like it's been a long time. We took a little time off here in the summer to get kind of caught up on some work here, but it feels kind of good to be back in this room and sharing some stuff with you, but uh, uh, it's good to be back, guys. Yeah, back in the saddle. Back in the saddle, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Justin, how's it feel to be back in that seat? I'm ready to go. Season three, we've got some awesome topics at hand. We put some hard work into coming up with that list. I can't wait to talk about everything while we're opening up some stores. Yeah. <laughs> uh, season three has been uh, on our books for a while. We've been trying to get everything lined out and got some great topics that we want to bring up and, and visit about. And um, But no, I want to start off by saying, hey, I'm Chris Alexis, uh, Aspire to Be founder and a, a CEO here at the office. Um, and it's good to be back. Um, and over here? Yeah, I'm Kimberly Alexis. Chief Financial Officer of Aspire to Be Hospitality, known as the GOAT, gatekeeper of all things. <laughs> Love Ooh. that. Where so did that true. come from? Man, yeah. I got to get me All one things of in the digital world or the file cabinet room are, <laughs> yeah. are both now. Both she said now. Getting away from the file cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> when she said GOAT, I was like, where is this going? Wow. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But Justin Smith, uh, COO, run operations for Aspire to Be Hospitality. Just looking forward to uh, pouring into season three. Um, happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. man. Um, so, uh, hey, I, I want to remind everybody uh, on all our, our platforms, right? I get called about this all the time. Please go in and subscribe to our places. Uh, Spotify, we're on everything. Apple, Spotify, uh, and YouTube. So, um, you know, go watch that. Go f follow us and subscribe, please. Yeah, um, like and share. Like and share, too. Yeah. Um, but, hey, topic today. Um, to kick off season one or season three, excuse me, season three is that uh, it's going to be partnerships. Uh, I've had multiple conversations with people out there in the field um, and just asked to have coffee with me and want to talk about partnerships and how we are partnerships and how me and Kim got started and things like that. So I kind of want to kick it off that way um, and talk about when, when people first come to me, they ask me like, hey, I, I, a partnership, should I bring a partnership? And one of the first things I, I ask is like, why do you want to bring a partner in? And do you need to bring a partner in? I think that's a big question. Yeah, yeah, there are benefits to partnership, no doubt. Yeah, and it's like when you bring a partner in is, uh, is first question you have to ask, Justin, I feel like it's, it's, is it financially or is it operationally or do you either need anybody, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the partnership for, for us in, in our industry, and we're, we're running restaurants, is are you bringing something to the table that can help contribute to the business? And that could be the front of house or the back of house. Or in some cases, we maybe want to grow a little bit faster and we've got something good going on, but we don't have the capital or the funding behind us to do that. So we might want to partner with someone or, um, you know, even a bank um, for, for financial reasons. But I um it's either of those yeah i know i know that kim you've brought this up to me a lot too and these are some of the guys that i spoke out to there is when they come to me and ask about partnerships they always say i always ask them like well do you need the money like well i don't know well have you gone to the bank yet yeah i mean have you gone to the bank to ask what you need because they're going to ask for a down payment what's your project cost what is your future what's your goals look like mm -hmm. and if you if if the bank tells you oh you need to put x amount of dollars down and you only have half of that well, then you might need to bring a cash partner in, right? Yeah, that's that's one of the benefits to partnership is that shared responsibility for the finances. Yeah, no doubt, you're not taking the burden of that liability all on your own. You're able to, sh you know, share that with a partnership. And as long as it's a great working partnership, it all works out good. Yeah, and thinking about starting your business too, you're making a decision on: Am I going to pay X amount of percent back to a person who might be backing me, or am I going to pay a certain interest rate to a bank? Yeah. So a lot of your decision point is: Can this person that I'm going to partner with give me some capital, and I might give him a little bit lower of return than a bank or a financer might do? And you're looking at interest rates, and you're you know going back and forth of, you know, am I paying back a human, or am I paying back, uh, you know, Uncle Sam? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's how it starts out, too, is like when you when you look at it, Kim and, and Justin, is when when you bring a partner in and you start thinking about that, it, it, what's your long term goals? Right. Is, are you going to open just yeah. one place or are you going to open 20 places? So that financial burden on you might be strong. Now, you might, you know, inherit a lot of money or have some money. And that's why I always said you got to have money to make money. Right. <laughs> no doubt. Um, no so doubt. so that's the big choice because you're, you're giving up a percentage of your company. You yes. know, and you, you see that. Go look at all these guys that started Facebook and, you know, guys that they gave percentages away, but how much they made off of it. Um, so when you look at that, you better be careful with that. So but then on, on, on the other side, I feel that is it's operational. 
right? And then you need to bring a, it's an operational partner because you might be starting a company. Um, and I, I'm going to use us, for example, and I use this out there is when me and you started our, our really, our, you know, we had our Quiznos. And mm -hmm. then we, we got into Buffalo Wild Wings, and we, we, we had a partner that we were going to bring in, more of a financial partner, yeah. but they were going to work in the company. And you were going to drift off, right? You want to be a, a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. And so we made this agreement with this, and, and, and we were going to have an operating partner, me, and then the other person being a financial partner, which was going to run the financials like you do in the back of the house. Well, immediately after we opened, we found out really quickly that that wasn't going to work, and we had to separate that from that and that's when you came back to work right yeah because you know in our experience in the beginning we needed a capital partner yeah and that's what speared off our partnership and that worked you know very well as far as capital goes and then like you said um the back of the house partner was he wanted different things for us so that's when i stepped in and and started doing those kind of things and that's that comes upon the challenges of a partnership. Yeah. When you go, we went into a capital partnership hoping for operations to be really sound and solid. And then we noticed some cracks. So we had to kind of pivot, pivot and um, bring in, you know, me as, as part of our partnership. And then we rolled with that for a little while. Brought you and the babies in. Yeah. We brought <laughs> me and the babies in, no doubt. Yeah. Still, still, still here. Still here. Yeah. So that's what you got to be careful of. Like, right, when you when you do these deals and you, you decide to partner up with people, and I've seen some bad partnerships that just fall apart, bringing friends in, bringing things like that in, the pitfalls of that. It's really hard, and, and you got to have your clear lanes of what they are and, and, and understand, you know, first off, what your vision was and then have a true plan and what's the benefits of it, Justin. I think the benefits when you bring in somebody operationally, we make these comments all the time. Right. That when you bring somebody like when we hire some a new leader of our company or bring are they bringing something to the table? Right. Are they bringing something that we're not good at? Yeah. It's like that. Um, that that movie, I think it's Liam Neeson, where his, his daughter gets stolen and he gets on the phone and he's like, I have a special set of skills. Yeah, this what that's how it is in restaurants, too. So when you're partnering with someone operationally, you might be a front of house focused organization or group of partners, and you could really enhance your business by having someone who's awesome in the back, who's really good at systems, who's really good at software. Who, you know, I mean, that might be what you go and look for. So when you're partnering with someone, look for strengths that you know you might not have, but then shared vision and goals. We share the same vision and goals, but our strengths are very, very different, very, very often. So like a partner needs to add value to what you're doing and lift your company up. You may spend, and we did, 20 years in the hospitality restaurant industry, mastering yeah. our skills, developing our skills, but we would still admit that we're pretty weak in some areas. So when yeah. you're looking at a partner, where are those weakness columns? And if there's people who excel there and thrive and they have shared vision and values, then that would be something super interesting to, to mold a good team and start a company. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and that's what that's how we did. That's how we pivoted from the capital partner into more of the operational partner. We sat and had uh, uh, Mexican food down the road and yeah. talked about our vision and goals. And then all of a sudden it was like, what do you do? You yeah. know, how do, what, is that, <laughs> yes. what does that look like? And I'm like, oh, this is what I do. And this is, you know, these are some of the things that I work on. And you're looking at each other like, yeah, we... We could use that <laughs> yeah. in our company. And, but that's the interaction that you should have. And you should do all of that work before you partner with people. Yeah. You get to know them. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. them out. <laughs> yes. It's just like you're interviewing a person, right? It's just like you're a, a partnership is like a, a second marriage, really. It's because mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. I mean, there's a lot of special time that you have to spend as partners, not just every day working, that you have to have the side meetings and, and side communications. And it goes back to roles. You really have to have your roles in your lanes and stay in them, Very right? Very well defined. Yes. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's one of the most important things that when you sit down and you're talking to somebody and you have partnerships, um, and they always say this in relationships too, right? The two same people are never going to be good together, right? Because yeah. one, one wants to do this and the same one wants to do this. Same thing in partnerships. you got to have those clear lanes and define those. And I want to say that in our roles, for, for me and you, when we first started, I mean, you have your role. You 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 didn't want to come in the front of the house. You wanted to stay in the back of the house, in the office, and do those things. And I was more in the front of the house. I could have never built this company as big as it is today without you. Yeah. You know, 
And I think that's what people have to understand. When you get when you're a one one off, it's easier to kind of do everything. But when you're growing your company, you need to have a plan to have those roles and who does what, and make sure that person that you're bringing on does a really really good job at it. Yeah, I think it's important as a partner to really know what your capabilities are and what your weaknesses are, yeah. and be honed in on that. And really, when you're dealing with a partnership or when you're trying to bring in somebody. Utilize their skills or their skill set to come into your partnership to either level you up or allow them to flourish in their capabilities. Yeah. You know, don't hold that partner back. I think that's really important for a partnership because looking at us, we were weak in technology, right? And yeah. that's when we went out to Justin and he was he had his strengths in technology. Well, you and I, <laughs> we had typewriters in college. I still don't know how to and update my iPhones. Still. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> It, it, it was a weakness, and it was a weakness that we were um, willing to admit. And then, yeah. you know, hey, he had a strength in that and technology. We saw that could be beneficial to our business. So that's another reason why we ventured out in a partnership. I want to say this, and since we're on that, that and you've, you've moved it to here, is now we're, we, we defined our roles, right? We, now we, first we saw our vision. Why do you want to bring a partner? And you kind of define your roles. Now we're going to talk about some pitfalls. Right. Yeah. And, and I want to say this out loud that I think one of the, the, the biggest pitfalls that partnerships have is not being and this goes for all of it. It's not saying me, but it, or any of partners is being open minded. Right. You have to be open minded to your partner. Right. Because I want to use you for an example and all of us, for example, to a certain extent. Well, yes. you know, but you come in, you, mm-hmm. you're not a op, you're not a big operator. You like to stay in the back financially. Vice versa, I'm not big in the financial side. Justin's big in what he does in operations and IT and systems. But there's many a times that you've come in my office and shut the door and, and gave me some criticism on my side as of, of being the CEO. Vice versa, you've I think you've come to Justin on his side of the COO side and, and gave him some criticism. And vice versa, me and you've talked, what can I do better mm-hmm. as a CFO? Mm-hmm. What would you like to see? And I've cr- and critiqued that. You've put on this monthly meetings now. And Justin, sent, and you asked, you sent out a, a survey saying, what do y'all think of how this new process I'm doing these? And we all sent you some questions. And you took it, you know, like, hey, yeah, this is great. It's going to help me build that. So some of the pitfalls, I think some, uh, some operators and some partners get offensive to that. That another partner will come tell them like, hey, I need some more from you. Or this is what I need from you, right? Yeah, well... Yeah, it's very hard to um, accept challenges from other people when you you want to think you're doing the you know the very best you can in, in a, your partnership, and when someone comes in and says, "Well, you can do this better," I mean, you have to really kind of swallow your pride, right? Yeah, and and learn from it, and that's what I wanted to do when I sent out that survey. That was kind of me swallowing my pride and saying, "Hey, I want to learn from my team, my partners. I want to know how I can benefit them. I want to know how I can better the company." and I think that's everyone should do that honestly. Yeah. But um, it's it's when those partners can't do that, that's when you have a problem. Yeah. And, yeah. and that was one of our down par- downfalls in one of our partnerships is that we just didn't our vision and goals didn't align. Didn't see eye to eye, and, yeah. and they didn't take criticism well, and everything was kind of a, a, a an argument. Yeah, you know, and it yeah. doesn't need to be. No, it doesn't need to be. And Justin, when it goes back to you, it's like when you came in the company, you know, you you were an operator, and then you had the opportunity to to, to buy into the partnership because me and Kim saw that and saw that you you know you brought something to the table. Your ultimate goal was to be so uh, have some ownership and things. And then with this, you you had your roles and the pitfalls. I mean, me and you've talked about. Yeah, you've come I, in my office many times. Of, I mean, the major pitfall for me is, I mean, I navigated twenty years of you know taking. A company from small, but most of it was when they were very big and it was a more corporate world and it was in different areas of the country, right? I mean, we weren't working in Southeast Texas in a a small company. So I had to be able to adapt. And I think in partnerships, if you're not able to adapt, that's a huge pitfall. We all adapt in our roles just a little bit. Every year you come in and say, hey, I love the multi-unit position, but we need to tweak it just this way. We're doing that as partners as well, right? We're And I think one of the, the pitfalls too is everybody's bringing experience and in partnerships or if you're an entrepreneur, you're starting a business, you're a top one percenter. Yeah. Like you're taking the jump, you're, you're doing it and you're working with other top one percenters who have just yeah. that are, they're striving for greatness, whether to build something and to, you know, to, to be great. Um, and I think you just have to be really mindful that those top one percenters are 
Um, they're leaders of the pack very, very often. And you have to learn. And if they're willing to learn and adapt and improve their skills, that makes me want to improve my skills. Mm -hmm. But if I'm working with a partner who's not interested in getting better, who isn't putting in extra work, who isn't putting in extra research or reading books or going to conferences and doing that on their own time, the more I see of that happening, the more I feed off of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think find partners who are also not just going to come to the table and say, I have the experience, I can do this, that are like-minded with you and just want to always become better. Some people want to always become better and grow their business from five doors to 500. Some don't. Some partners want to inject some money or some time and operate two or three stores and sail off into the sunset. Yes. You got to recognize that. Yeah. 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 You guys are asked yeah. you guys we want to build something here. Yeah. Yes. We share that goal. We know it. And we work a lot in our free time. We do a lot of things outside of this office, even though we're probably the first people to get to the office and often leave yeah. um, in the company. But that that's not enough. Yeah. Right. But I think that's that's important too, Justin. I think it's a lot of too important when partnerships when you bring them bring somebody in too that they have to understand too that you know uh, that they they own this thing too and they and they're they're working at it and you're working at it as a group. You're not working at an individual. It's like you know when you're when you're when I when I saw it, when I look at talk about this, it's kind of more going into a, I don't know a maintenance plan, right? You you got to kind of collaborate together. And I look at it like this: like you know, I'm very analytical. It's like you know, I'm a head coach of a football team. And I know, tell this is our game plan. But then I also, too, there's times in the game I look at my offensive coordinator and say, hey, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know, we need to now maintenance this plan. It's, it's, it, we're in the second quarter and we're not doing well. Mm -hmm. We got to put more points on the board. Vice versa, go to your defensive coordinator. And, you know, and, and just because, you know, your partner, you're, you're the head coach and you're the CEO, but you're also, you have partners too that you have to spend time with and, and operate with and work with. Even if a silent partner, you have to collaborate with. You have to sit down and show them the financials because if not, they're going to be calling you out and saying, hey, why aren't we making any money? Yeah. You know, I feel like, you know, maintenance as a partner is, 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 is kind of is tough sometimes, but it has to be done, right? Oh, yeah. And there's, well, and there's benefits to maintenance. It, you know, when you're celebrating your successes together as partnerships or you uh, recognize your failures as partnerships, that's, that's a platform to learn from. Mm -hmm. And that's a platform to better your company. And um, when you don't do that, when everyone is just silent and continuing to working in their lanes, <coughs> excuse me, then your partnership can has a potential uh, a potential ability to suffer yeah. and, and not be successful. And and you join partners to have a successful business. Yeah, that was that's the ultimate goal. And one of the difficult topics in maintenance is, um, you know, the, the, the money that's at stake, mm -hmm. the, the injections that you might be making, the capital that you might, you know, put up. Or if you do happen to get, you know, fortunate or blessed enough to open some successful business, it's when do I take money out or are we using that money to grow? And you need to get an alignment on what your long term plans are and your short term plans it's, and, and have a pulse on everybody's financial situation that you can continue on the mission without having to maybe pull money out of the business or, you know, make decisions that you wouldn't make. Yeah. Um, and that's maintenance, constantly yeah. knowing the pulse of, you know, um, we can use Aspire to be, for example, where six, you know, restaurants strong under that umbrella. Um, and I, I feel really, really good about, you know, some of them, but not all of them. And yeah. there's a couple that we need to really focus on making winners um, but there's maintenance to that, yeah. and and there there's a lot that goes into that. So I think you have to just have a pulse on when it's appropriate and ready to take money out. But that shouldn't be a reactive thing. You all should talk about that before you yeah, put your you money out. Yeah, you made a really yeah. good point. That yeah. should be really well defined before yeah. you sign the dotted line. For Absolutely, a partnership it's a big is, deal. Yeah, yeah knowing um, what you're going to do with the proceeds or the benefits or the income from your business. That's where a lot of yeah. conflict yeah. happens. I think that's yeah. where a lot yeah. of questions come. You know, hey, this person thinks I should or I shouldn't. You all didn't attack your partnership properly if that wasn't a combo yeah. leading in. Well, that's a, yeah, that's you a problem. Need to talk about paying you, down debt. You paying need to down the debt. Yeah. What's the, what's the pay goal? What's dividends. The, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think that's the problem, too, with some partnerships. Be careful out there because some of them think just because you start making a, some money that it's time to give it out. But, you know, you got to keep some of that money in the store or in the business because um, you never know what's going to happen. And some partners just want cash, 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 cash. And, 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 and actually, Kim, I think we're controlled by some banks, too, that could keep oh, that, yeah. right? 
and you have to pay attention to that. Their yeah. debt ratio, all yes. of it. Yep. And we you, we have to explain that to our some some partners now that we have. They're silent partners that yeah we might be sitting on a lot of cash, but we can only dividend so much out because of our bank covenants, right? Yeah, and yeah. they need to understand that. Yeah. And so if that's well defined in the beginning, you won't have those issues. <laughs> and that's the maintenance we're talking about, yeah. though. So yeah. when we say maintenance and we, you know, when we well, kind of give some guidance there, make sure you, you, you're going to have partnership docs, right? Yeah. Make sure everybody understands them. And then you also sit and have meetings. Hey, we're going to do this. And this is if we're successful, this is what it's going to look like. Yeah. If we're all feeling OK about it, this is what it's going to look like. But if we have some people or some stores or whatever you're opening that have some opportunity, we're just going to hold everything. Yeah. Yes. And, and wait. I want to I want to throw one of the main things that make me laugh about maintenance when you're talking about mm-hmm. dividend out money, but then when it's time to pay more money, like you said, when you got a dog out there, right? When you got a, a, a project that that's cut, open, cut me a check. Yeah, or, and it's or, like, and Kim calls a partnership meeting and yeah. says, um, "Hey, we got to we got to ante up some cash, <laughs> right? Um, so just because we got in it, it's not always making money. Sometimes you got to build it, and we got to pay more money." Some so, businesses take time to mature. Yeah. yeah. We've seen that. We we knew that it would it would get to the point it needed to get to, but to get there takes huge investment. Well, I think that goes into the adaptability, right? Yeah. That's when it start falling into the part of like, okay, we thought we were going to open these business and this one it stumbled a little bit. And and it stumbled for one of them stumbled for a reason because we're in a place where everything kind of shut down during COVID and nobody really came back to work yet. But there was times that we weren't just k- kicked off like we thought it was going to be. So we had to be do some adaptability and trying to ch- change. You came to us and came to the ops team, and we kind of looked at each other like, hey, we got to change the, the labor model. We got to change the whole model of it and kind of figure it out. And then, hey, there's some times that we got to ante up some money too, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's a, you got to be a, a, a ready to adapt to situations that might have looked great a year ago that's not going to look great. Right now. And I think adaptability um, starts with great communication. So it's just making sure that every single week we're collaborating, we're all going over are the things that we're working on, we're helping each other out, and it'll make the the change or that uh, you know adapting uh, more comfortable for the partners, and it'll make it more comfortable for your company when everybody's yeah. aligned. And, and the last on adaptability, I think that kind of you know is is when you when you have a vision, and you have a goal. And but then that's not in a year that changes a little bit. So you need to get your partners together and hopefully have some open minded to say, hey, we got to we're going to pivot here a little bit and, and change the course what we're going to we're not going to grow this brand anymore. We found a different brand we want to grow with if whatever investor you are and you got to have open minded people that trust you and look at you and think, OK, we're making the right decision here. Yeah, because if not, you're very strapped. Yeah. And, and, and that, and that kind of hurts you in some aspects, you know. Yeah. Um, I wrote that down. That's why I looked at my notes. Um, you said something kind of mutual trust and respect and partnerships is um, such a big deal. That's, yeah. a, that's a big word. And I think if you're going to partner with someone, um, you really should be making that determination inside if you trust them and you have a lot of respect of how they operate and how they do business. So yeah. um, it's I mean, it's cliche, but it's it's a big deal. Yeah. Make sure you feel yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you mm-hmm. trust. Yeah. Have the same ethnical values. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm blessed that one of my best partners is my partner in life. <laughs> yeah, you made that <laughs> determination a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I, the, I, 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 one thing I trust to fire out of her, yeah. you know. Yeah. So uh, it's not a bad approach, though. You said it earlier. Yeah, you know, treat a partnership a, like a marriage. You, yeah. you, 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 you really need to because yeah. it's a yeah. second marriage, right? You got to have that relationship. You got to have that one-off time. You, you got to have that quiet time together and and visit and and talk about the situation that's happening. If you don't, if you hold back and hold it all in and don't discuss things, well, things blow up. You got to so, learn to fight. Yeah. yeah. But, you and know, it, and it's tough. I think the, the, the last I want to say, and, and, you know, anybody comp wants to make a comment on this, is just when you make a, when you decide that you're going to do a project and you want to think about bringing in a partner, you know, have a vision, what it is, and do you really need one? And I would stress to you 100%, do not bring a partner in unless you're needed. If it's really, really needed financially, are operationally because you do not want to build a company and have to share it, you know, and, 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 and when and you're, what she mean by that and do all the work. Yeah. You're going to do you, all the work <laughs> and all that. And, but, but then you could bring work people to work in and things like that to help you build the brand. But if you're building your own concept and stuff, do, you know, go out and try to get financing first before you just sell yourself, mm-hmm. you know, because at the end of the day, you're going to sell a percentage of your company. And you're going to you're going to have to when you go to sell that company, 
that's you could have built this brand and you might only own 51 percent, but you just gave 49 percent away yeah it helped you build it but if you don't need it don't do it yeah yeah all right yeah hold on to ownership as much as you can especially 51 percent Make sure that you have the ability to make all the decisions and ride the ship forward and you don't let anybody come in and, you know, be able to vote down those decisions for you. That's yeah. a big detail. Yeah. Because so. when you're building, your, when, you're build, when you're putting this much effort into your own company and mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you go and want to leave it to your kids, you want everything that you can to leave to them or have something to a able to give to them, too. So um, any more closing comments, Justin? Anything you might want to throw in here at the end? No, I'm, I mean, I'm blessed to be a part of Aspire to Be. This is, um, you know, one of the first partnerships that I was included in. And, uh, you know, for, for my personal quick story is I worked and developed a set of skills over a long period of time saved money through my old job, through consulting, through working on my craft. And, you know, when you want to get into a partnership, be ready to take a chance and it will be a chance. And it, it, it don't, nothing is perfect. Um, but if you work real hard and continue to work hard at it, you, and you adapt and you do all the things that we say, you have the ability to do something life-changing great and, you know, leave things to your children and be a part of something super special and wake up every day and love what you do. And I love what I do. I love the partnership that we're in. And I hope, you know, anybody listening, um, you know, if you have questions or, or thoughts on any of our journeys and how we put this together or any partnerships that we are a part of, um, would love to share. But this is a super, super important topic for a lot of people who are putting up a lot of what they've probably worked many, many years for. So we just wanted to pr provide some give back on some of the pitfalls and things that we're pumped about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Kim, you have any comments on that? Yeah. Just and just for me, I feel like a partnership. We've had several great partnerships and then we've had some that are kind of struggles. But um, either way, we're I'm very blessed to have the partnerships that we've had in our in our life. Mm -hmm. And and they've brought us a very long way. So I just want to give a shout out to all our partners. That's right. And and thank you, um, you know, for trusting in us at the time. And and i um, very blessed that we were able to take a partnership, a very small partnership, roll it into several other partnerships, but be here today and at a rock solid foundation and growing Aspire to be hospitality like we are. Yeah, at the, I'm glad you said that because, that, you know, again, I always say this and, you know, we focus on our losses and, and, and sometimes and just every partnership we had has been great, to be honest with you, you know, yeah. because it, it catapulted that we're at. And if you, you don't know mine and Kim's story and Justin's, go back in season one, you'll see it. Right. Uh, <laughs> we needed those partners, right? Yeah. We, we needed some financial partners at, at one time to help us get to this level. Um, and, and it helped us a lot. But just we're just telling you what, we, what we've what we experienced and some of the failures that we didn't pay attention to because we were young and, and, and didn't know the business as much as we know it now. But Justin, and hit a comment too that says um, we get we're getting a lot of questions don't ask and one of the episodes we might have here coming up is a lot of questions from the field from our from our team members yeah. and from our leadership team and and maybe from you too so we, we want to do an episode of uh, questions and answers a little bit too on the spot um, so if you have questions more of partnership because uh, we have a certain time frame we, we can't hit everything on here but you might have one and we'd love to answer it for you and kind of give you our perspective and how it worked for us and what didn't work for us, right? Yeah. Yep. So, uh, hey, thank you guys. But, hey, um, it, it, I, we, we've, we've pre-drawn some numbers, and you kind of probably didn't really know what that was. So uh, what number were you? Number one, maybe. What number were you? Two. And I got three, so uh, I'll let you two pick first. So what that is, we're going to have a kind of, since football's kicking off, super glad for Buffalo Wild Wings. Right? Oh, yeah. Wait till you see wait. the new Buffalo Wild Wings commercial coming out, man, for football. I'm so pumped for this one. Um, but go back to that. Uh, we're going to do a fantasy football draft, but we're going to do something a little unique. We're going to take your top three picks, um, and I want to pick some uh, restaurants. Ooh. What are your top three Can restaurants? You we can't pick, pick ours, or we can't. No, can't pick ours. Okay, can't pick ours. I would, we love our restaurants. Yeah, well, I would pick all three. I, so all those ones on the board over here. Don't um, count. Oh, man. Yeah, because if you if we did do that and you didn't pick Buffalo Wild Wings right off the bat, yeah, 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 we get yeah. So you cannot pick one, but we're gonna do it like a snake draft. So okay. one, two, three, then three, two, one, then one, two, three, right? And you pick three of the concepts that you really enjoy personally and financially. If, if you could start over or you could add three concepts to this board of our six, right, which three would you like to be part of? And it might be something, you know, you're in the past or future, whatever. It's just for fun, right? So I kind of get to know you. Um, you know, I thought this would be fun since it's 
football season. So, Justin, you're up. Pick I'm going to start with the one I probably spend the most time at. I've actually applied for many, many years ago and got like to level 14. There's like 50 versions of getting there. I'm going with Chick-fil-A. Um, they make a ton of money. We find ourselves there all the time. And uh, we were there last uh, night. <laughs> yeah, but so were we. <laughs> Kim's probably biting her lip right now. That's in my yeah. portfolio, yeah. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Kim's, Kim's biting her lip right now. So, all right. So, Chick-fil-A is off the board. I figured that'd be one of the top ones. Yeah. What you got? Okay. So, I'm coming to the table with Quiznos. I'd like to bring oh. Quiznos back to the board. Do okay. it. Let's yeah. do make it. Make Quiznos great again. Yes. yes. Let's make, make Quiznos, Quiznos great. Yeah. Love it. Um, matter of fact, we were driving the other day, and uh, you know, I like sandwiches, and we were in Houston. Yes. And Kim was like, so I do not want to eat a sandwich. Yeah. And so, unless it's a Quiznos. And I actually looked on the on map in Houston, and there's two. We got to go to them. Really? Yes. I mean, bring Quiznos back. I yeah. Mean, I mean, I, I, can I get some thumbs up a there? Sandwich <laughs> Shop makes the top six. There might be another one. Yeah. yeah. So, so <laughs> it, it, it's good call. I yeah. was going to take right, that Quiznos. one, Kimberly, even yeah. though that's because that's what catapulted that we're at today. Thank you, Quiznos Oven Baked Subs from way back. <laughs> uh, Honey Bacon Club, you know. Oh, yes. That was your favorite with extra uh, French dressing sauce. Yes. Well, I can make that in my sleep. Um, you know, I, I'm going to pick one here that I, I wish I would have got part of, and I still look at them all the time. It's been around forever. It's Taco Bell. Yeah. Taco Bell. I was going to say that one I too. love Taco Bell. 20 years from now, yeah. 30 years from now, everything's going to be a Taco Bell. It's Taco yeah. Bell. Total is, recall. You know, yeah, Taco, Taco Bell, Bell. Is, is, a, is a concept that I just it just it mesmerized me because they're really yeah. good at their menu. Kids love it. Older people love it. It's all different kind of types of people, and they just keep – banging out innovating. what do you get there yeah, they yeah. Keep innovating. well i want the interrito the but they wanted to bring that back but the mexican, mexican pizza. pizza i do the okay. dorito locos tacos yeah oh, they're so <laughs> oh, good gosh. oh man the burrito supreme oh. extra sour cream yeah so uh and my kid one of my well all my kids love it but you know chapel really likes it just a soft taco meat only it's yeah. pretty cool so uh and they got a great app too i will say so hey it's back to me number three because it's snake draft so all i get right. to pick fast so, food and man you know uh, the, I'm adding stuff to my board, and I'm really hung up on this. is is a breakfast concept, okay. you know, and, and an, like another broken egg. I'm really looking at that pretty hard because I like breakfast. I see all these breakfast okay. concepts out there. We eat at them a lot. They they, they got a niche. Just the way they operate, only from like seven to two, it blows our minds, you know. So um, you know, I, I'm I'm looking at a breakfast concept. So like another broken egg. So I'm got- thinking. Breakfast, yeah. you got lunch. Yeah, don't be picking on my stuff now. All right. Okay, Kimberly, we're back at you, so go after I'm it. I'm so excited for this one. Ponchos. Ponchos! Ponchos. <laughs> yes! Man! Ponchos. I want to raise that little flag so they... bad and say more soap up through yes. Yes! And I found one. I know you did. In Houston. We're yes. going to we're it. It's going. in Humboldt. I've never been to You've a never been. We're going to take you to Ponchos. We're going to Ponchos. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm it's a buffet. Can... You ever heard of it? No. It's a buffet Mexican of Mexican food. food. Buffet. Like, yeah, you walk through a line, you, you tell them what you want, and then you go sit down, and then if you want more, you raise this little flag up at the table. It's like an old-timey oh, flag. we talked about this before. Yeah, and they come, yeah, and they hey, I want two more awesome. enchiladas, or cheese enchiladas. And they bring it to you. It's amazing. Yeah, and it's funny that Kim brought that up. Because I we were sitting at the doctor's office in Houston the other day. I said, Kim, I was going to bring you to Poncho's. And you're like, what? Why didn't we go? I was like, because it's an hour that way. We're yeah. not, we're not, we got to get home. So Poncho's, good call. Yeah. You know? So, Justin. Um, I'm going to go with Cheesecake Factory. Oh, you. I love Cheesecake Factory. I'm enamored by the operation. They have like 13 managers. They do a gazillion dollars in sales. But their menu <laughs> I would is hate to run their food cost. Yeah. Uh, that's true. <laughs> But they have like 13 managers. You have a yeah. manager of cutting the onions and a manager of delivering the cheesecakes. That's There's wild. Man- um, but it's a really cool operation, a really cool company. Um, just um, my my wife worked there for a little while, so I have some insights to, to how they operate. And I've always just been uh, in, in love with the brand. And, man, I like eating there, too. Yeah. So yeah. That I would probably be eating there every day. So their food costs would be hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so that's cool. So. I knew you were gonna pick cheesecake. Factory. I know, and I know my three. Don't you steal it? Okay. <laughs> what's your what? Okay, so what's your third? Uh, uh, it's uh, oh yeah, 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 it wraps around to me. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we're we're not messing around here. We're going right to Jersey Mike's. Oh. It would have been my one, <laughs> but I knew you I guys knew wouldn't take up. it. 
Jersey <laughs> Mike's. Um, my retirement plan is I would love to own a Jersey Mike's. I would love to just, you know, bless people every day with a good sub. I went to like store number two. Yeah. Um, I, I li- grew up in Tom's River, New Jersey. So it's a brand that I've seen grow for many, many years. And I just don't think there's a, a better sub. We might disagree on the Quiznos Mike's thing, but uh, yeah. I, I, I love it. They're clean. Their operation's good. I follow a lot of their operators. Um, and I've just been, you know, super proud of my roots and growing up in uh, that portion of New Jersey, which is, um, you know, the Jersey Shore area. Uh, and it's just a brand that um, I, I could see myself running as a, you know, in, in retirement and just having a blast doing it. Yeah. Good call on that. I, I, I knew you were going to pick that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I did stay away from it, but, you know, I had to have Taco Bell. Yep. So, all right, Kim, your last pick here. Smash Burgers. Smash Burgers. You were like going smash like. Burgers. Yeah. It, 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 yeah. Man, that's a good burger. They have a yeah. good turkey burger I've good had there. Yeah. Man, yeah. that's a concept sprout, too that sprouts. just, I don't understand awesome. what happened. There was you know, a lot it was of like there were, but there were so many burger concepts at the time, you know, and yeah. they all were just. But we looked at that concept a long time, really yeah. learned the brand, but pulled off of it. I mean, they kind of struggled a little uh, bit. Your restaurant portfolio, I I haven't been to one of them in a long it's time. It's all I, I'm, on the palate. I, yeah, um, <laughs> you're, that's all I'm you're picking. Like, <laughs> you're picking everything on the – none of them, they're making that much money, but it's <laughs> all palate-driven. I'm going to Houston tomorrow with the girls, and we're going to Ponchos, Quiznos. Yes. Yeah. Trust um, me. We're yeah, excited about your picks. <laughs> you did good. So um, my last, I struggle with this one because there's two that I really, really wanted, and you know, but I'm gonna go barbecue. It's 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 Ooh. Rudy's barbecue. Man, you yeah. know, I um, didn't even think barbecue. I mean, but you're a barbecue guy. I like barbecue. Now, yeah. don't, yeah. hey, don't yeah. get mad at me, guys. Crazy. I mean, there's some great barbecue places. There's some great here in hometowns areas. In our hometown, there are some smaller ones, but Rudy's just kind of every time I go to a Ruby, Rudy's, they pull it off. It's the same thing, really. It's it's in, and they they start in a little gas station. Um, so when we're driving or anywhere we're at, uh, we're in College Station. We're eating at Cooper's because Cooper's got we we eat barbecue all the time. Oh yeah, Cooper's is. Right. They got Truth was good the other day. Truth was Houston. good. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking at the whole idea of the whole... 1701. The whole Rudy's just food. does a phenomenal job at it, you know? They do. If you're, yeah. own, if you're putting something up on that board, Rudy's is a cool one. Yeah, but yeah, 1701 in, in Beaumont, man, they, they, do, really they, they do really great. I'm just looking at the mass development of it. Yeah. You know, of it's, it's hard to pull off... Uh, that barbecue in multiple joints, right? And have a huge facility that's yeah. run well and cleaned properly. I mean, they do and a good job. And a gas job. station. And yeah. I can make some yeah. sell some gas too. Yeah. So I'm looking at the financial side of it too. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so um, hey, that was fun. Yeah. That was fun. So what, what did we you, win? Yeah. Um, I don't know. What well, have a vote. I mean, if anybody w- vote Kim, Justin, or Chris, and which three you'd rather well, so have? Your three. What's your three? What's your? I got th- cheesecake, Jersey Mike's, and Chick Fil A. Okay. I have Quiznos, Ponchos, and <laughs> Smash Burger. <laughs> <laughs> That's still so fun. That's true. You get a lot of Kims in the, in the comments. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of comments. <laughs> I had um, what I had Rudy's Barbecue, Taco Bell, and another broken egg. Yeah. Um, breakfast concept. So, uh, yeah, that'd be cool if you go out and give a you know shout out, Kim, Justin, or, or Chris, who, 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 who's you like best and then number two we'll call it out all day we'll call number it out two. one time too so but hey uh thank you guys for watching again it was fun to do this it's always fun to share our stories and share what we're doing out there in the community and hope to get better at this uh we're on season three it's been fun it's been a long summer and we got a lot of stuff in the projects uh, that we hope to share here soon mm-hmm. with this new go we got built it's being built right now we're going to actually do a, a show there Right, I think we're gonna try to do a show yeah, there. That's gonna be exciting. And inside the store, and kind of maybe talk about the whole construction side of it, the pitfalls and downfalls and pivots that we've had to make already in that construction side. So, but uh, thank you for Change watching, guys. Orders. Yeah, I, was just <laughs> I heard, out. I saw you. And I, I unfortunately told her we just got another one. <laughs> yeah, uh, but hey, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next episode, guys. Thank y'all. Yeah.